Well, shalom, shalom. I'm Barbara, and I'm always short and sweet. And today we're going to talk about the Principality of Ashtaroth, and uh, she is the Principality of Sexual Immorality. And today I'm going to tell you the one thing about Ashtaroth maybe you didn't know, that she has another side to her. The Principality of Sexual Immorality, we know that she was one of the false gods that caused the fall of Israel, and these false gods were standing for the principalities of darkness. Baal represented lust and greed, Ashtra, sexual immorality, Molech, the destruction and child sacrifice. So we are witnessing a lot of these things that happen in Israel happening in America. With the spirit of Ashtra, sexual immorality is taken out of the bedroom and out of marriage and put on public display. So, in ancient records reveal that she had another side to her. She was the principality that represented the merging of male and female. And her work was to confuse gender, to break down the distinctions between man and woman. And she was against the creation of Jehovah. And the ancient texts about her also say that she says of herself, Though I am a woman, I am a man. The priests of Ashtaroth were men who were across the boundaries of gender and appeared as women, male and female. The principality of merging male and female from Ashtaroth, sexual immorality, this principle was even in ancient times. And this is what we're seeing today, and it happened in ancient times, transvestitism, transsexuality, confusion, and destruction of the role of man. And so this is a war against Torah. Uh, this is a principality that feminized Yah's men and masculinized women. And this is what the culture is doing now. And we know that Jehovah said he created male and female in Genesis 1.27. So culture is doing this, and they have no idea why they are doing it. Um, this principality of Ashtaroth is charged, according to the ancient records, with turning a man into woman and woman into man and making your women dress like men and men dress like women, which the Torah, Deuteronomy 22.5, talks against this. So diligently, we must know that now is the time for revival, Pray for revival. Work for revival. Believe for revival. Live in revival. Because if you live in revival, the revival starts here and now, and the devil can't do anything about it. Blow the shofar. It's time to begin. These are the days of Elijah. And if America doesn't see revival, and it's all over America, revival is the only thing we need and if these are the days of Baal and Ashtoreth and Molech, then it must be the days of Elijah. So who is Elijah? And where is Elijah? You are called to be an Elijah. Yah uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. So if you fight, you're going to win. You can get the chance to stand with Jehovah in the day when the world's standing against Jehovah. And that's an honor, a powerful honor. Remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So stand. Stand like Elijah, breaking down these strongholds. There's nothing compared to the spirit of Elohim. The devil is nothing compared to the spirit of Jehovah. The spirit of lust is nothing compared to Jehovah. The spirit of bondage is nothing compared to Jehovah. And the spirit of fear is nothing compared to Jehovah. He is the living Elohim. And Yeshua came to set the captives free, as he quoted from Isaiah 61. So finally, my brethren, be strong in Jehovah and the power of his might, Ephesians 6.10. So like if this was a blessing to you, please share with your friends that love Yeshua, your family, your children, your grandchildren. And um, put on the whole armor. And remember, I'm short and sweet, and I'll see you back again next time. Thanks for listening in.